And I know the head coach up at Wilton High School is still disciplining a young kid by the name of Mike Pressler a long time ago. And this guy was a legend in coaching. His name was Guy Whitten. And when my cousin started playing lacrosse at Norwalk High School, we would go up and we would watch Wilton play and beat Norwalk by 15, 20 goals at the half. And they kept winning. And out of that program came a coach, a lacrosse coach who would grow up and have to face the toughest foe any lacrosse coach had ever faced in his life, liars. And this kid was taught, he was taught to take on all opponents. And he was taught the truth. And they couldn't handle the truth down in Durham. But he had to handle his players, because those players were the most important thing in the world, Coach Mike Pressler. So that little kid from Wilton High School who was kicking Norwalk High's butt and New Canaan and Darien all the time was now put in a position that, forget a lacrosse coach, any coach in America, any person in America would never have to be in. But he looked it right in the eye. He had one job, protect his kids, protect his players that those moms and dads had sent to him with their good graces. He lost his job to protect his kids. He, come here, he comes here today and he's spoken all over America to make sure it never happens again. I told you earlier, Coach, if my son, and he's playing lacrosse now, he's nine years old, and I know you can get into it and ride it pretty good, he's the t you're the type of guy I wanted to play for because when I send him off, I'm gonna feel good about that. The head coach from Bryant College in Springfield, Rhode Island, our keynote speaker, Mike Pressler by way of Wilton High School. Bowling is the perfect sport. Everyone can play it and no one sits on the bench. Size and strength are not a factor. I've enjoyed bowling for the last 16 years. When we, when we took the Duke lacrosse team to the Durham lanes over spring break to let off some steam and enjoy each other's company away from lacrosse. And only my little girls got the bumper lane. Between the tacky bowling shirts, nachos, and lemonade, there was heated, healthy competition and a lot of laughs. In between games, Team Pressler, which consisted of my, myself and my daughters, took a break to get in the concession line. The caller ID revealed a new message from the Dean of Students, and I quickly returned her call and heard for the first time about the party and stunningly about the now infamous allegations. I was told members of the lacrosse team were being accused of a gang rape, sexually assault, and exotic dancer at 610 North Buchanan. I promised her I would get to the bottom of this and immediately call her back. My immediate reaction was absolute outrage. What were they doing having this kind of party? But most importantly, I knew there was no way any of these guys could have committed this horrific crime. I summoned the leadership of our team, our four senior captains, to the lawn outside the bowling alley. As I began to present the allegations I just heard from the Dean of Students, I will never forget the surprise, the look of surprise, shock, and astonishment on their faces. Right then and there, I knew this was not true. As they, without qualification, denied even touching that person, I said to them, quote, if you swear to me, and swear to me on my children you are telling the truth, that this did not happen, I will stand by you, with you, and for you all the way, no matter what happens. They individually and collectively said to me that no one touched this person in any way, shape, or form that is alleged. From that moment on, I knew absolutely this didn't happen, and our guys were innocent. 
Today, it will be almost 20 months since the alleged incident and the event we know today as the Duke Lacrosse case began. It began as a small wave of untruths with ingredients such as race, sex, class, and entitlement. Back in the spring of 06, those ingredients, fueled by the former prosecutor and the media, became the wind that turned that small wave into the incredible tsunami that swept across and engulfed our entire country. I have checked. There is no chapter in the Coaching 101 handbook how to handle this one. I can honestly say I've learned more about life and relationships in the last 20 months than I have in my last 47 years. This case for all of us reinforced the core values that make us the men we are. In the end, it becomes a fundamental thing. When you have a relationship with someone and you say you believe him or her, it means you stand by them, support them, and be with them regardless of the circumstances or outcome. To some, there are business, business practices that are thought of as old school, old fashioned, or outdated. Well, there is one that should never be, and that is when you shake a man's hand, it becomes his word. I shook those four captains' hands in their living room the day they committed to come to Duke and play lacrosse in our program. I shook Reed and Colin's hand and promised their parents we would be there to support them in all aspects of their lives. Those four captains shook my hand outside the bowling alley and they said they and the entire team were absolutely innocent of the charges, I believed. There's a motto we adopted a couple years back. It said, quote, all in. All in to us meant all in all the way. So often throughout my career, we have heard co coach, quote, we're with you, only later to find out, coach, we're with you only, win or tie. Like the old school guys in this room, like Coach Jack Emmer, Bob Young, and Mike Quick, I still have my bell bottoms, eight track tapes, and polyester shorts. <laughs> I'm holding out that these things, along with that old school handshake, will someday come back into vogue. When I think of my 16 year tenure at Duke, Univ Duke University, I reflect not so much in the recent times, but the very beginning. In 1991, Duke Lacrosse was the doormat of the ACC, and the administration was considering dropping the sport. At 31 years old, my wife and I came to Durham to build a winning program at Duke University. To build a winning program, let's first take a fundamental look at those three words. Building, it becomes the kind of foundation you, you pour. Core values and infrastructure that are set in place day one. They are strong enough to hold up over time and adversity. Speaking of adversity, one of the many things we've learned about this recent episode in our lives is clearly this. Adversity doesn't build character. Adversity reveals it. Winning is a relative term. Success on the field is certainly a big part of it. In the big picture, winning is me measured by how your players perform in the classroom, what kind of career path they follow after graduation, what kind of husbands and fathers they become. Hopefully, they come to you as young men and leave as gentlemen. In all sports, we have seen great teams come and go, but great programs are always in the hunt. They might not win the championship every year, but consistently produce winning teams in the ways I just mentioned. Little did we know 16 years ago, the core values that we set in place day one would be tested to such incredible limits. Values described by the words truth, honor, trust, and loyalty. Phrases like strength of character, testing your mettle, and staying the course would all prove to be the very glue that would hold us together when this recent situation was at its worst. As a coach, we're entrusted with the greatest resource in our country, the youth of America. Our vehicle for developing that resource is the sport of men's lacrosse. Through our four years together, our duty as coaches to provide our players with the armor and more importantly, the tools to be successful in life. The word honor. That word was demonstrated when seeing the entire, entire world was condemning us and quote, throwing the team under the bus. Amid all the talking heads, all the adults that try to take us down, we refused to lash out, we refused to lower ourselves to that level. We stayed on the high road because we had the truth on our side. We kept our honor. Trust is to know your teammate will do the right thing under the greatest adversity, and especially when no one's watching. Often other coaches have mentioned to me that they go to bed at night feeling that their careers rest in the decisions of 18, 19, and 20 year olds. And that I think about this before the situation, and this is something I think about today. The answer was no then, and no, I don't think about it now, because I trusted. How can you not get trust without first giving it? I feel the greatest.